Hello and welcome back to my channel. So as someone who's been shooting with Blackmagic cameras for years and years and has shot thousands and thousands of clips using the Blackmagic camera and the Blackmagic interface, I wanted to do a video about the Blackmagic camera app for the iPhone. And that's what this video is. It's basically a deep dive into using the camera app from the perspective of someone who is an experienced Blackmagic user. So along the way, I'll be giving tips and tricks and hints that I've picked up using the Blackmagic cameras over the years. So make sure that you watch the video all the way through to the end to pick up some of those tips. So join me after the break and let's get into it. Okay, so here we are on the main screen. The different menu options here on the right hand side is camera, media, chat and settings. What I'm gonna do is just go through and show you the different settings that I use and explain why I use them in specific circumstances and why I'm set them up based on using the Blackmagic Pocket 4K and the 6K Pro. This is how I have it set up. So first of all, on the top left-hand corner, you have the lens selection. Um, obviously this is um, specific to the iPhone. It'll be different on Android, but I don't use an Android device. And so I'm just gonna be showing you about the iPhone. So you have the different lenses that you can use, which you got the extra wide 13 millimeter, the 24 millimeter, the 48 millimeter, and the 120, which is meant to be the times five, times two, times one, and times 0.5. You might notice when it when it goes down to the uh, 120, it's actually not showing you any image. That's because I've got a variable ND on the back, and it's actually blocking a bit of it. So I'll just I'll just move it so it's out of the way. There, there you can see. But obviously, it's overexposed because the ND is gone. So I'll put that back on and. I will set it back to say 24 and then we can adjust, let's adjust the ND. There. So it's not super blown out. So you adjust the lenses that way, you select your lens that way. Then it's the frames per second, frame rate. So I usually shoot at 23.98, that's the base rate for the recording and with the Blackmagic cameras, one of the reasons I love the Blackmagic camera is that it gives you the option to shoot off speed. So unlike a lot of other cameras which give you uh, slow motion only at multiples of the base rate, so it'll be 60 frames per second or 50 frames per second, 120 frames per second, Blackmagic cameras are fantastic in that you can set something called off speed and with that you can select pretty much any frame rate from five or four, um, all the way up to the maximum here would be 60 frames per second. But whatever you uh, record at, obviously if you record above your base rate, it'll be slow motion. If you record below your frame rate in terms of frames per second, it will be fast motion. Um, and in fact, in action movies, what they tend to do, if you're, uh, the base rate is 24 frames per second, sometimes they record at 22, so it just gives it a little bit of extra um, urgency and makes things look a bit faster. So there's a little tip for you. In terms of when I record slow motion, I would be somewhere above the base rate, which would be 23.98. So it could be 25, it might be 27, it might be 30, it might be 35 or whatever. Sometimes you just want a little bit of slow motion. And that's the thing that black uh, magic cameras will give you because of the software, because of the way that they allow you to do off-speed recording. So that's an extremely handy feature and it's good to see that on the phone as well. Okay, so, but for simplicity, I'll take it off of off speed. And next thing we have here is the shutter angle. There is a menu option where you can change it from shutter angle to time. It makes absolutely no sense to change it to time if you're dealing with cinematography. You want to basically try and keep that at 180 degrees so that you get the right amount of motion blur. Although sometimes when you're doing fast action, you may want to change that so you take this lock off and you'd want to change that to say sometimes people do 90 degrees um, or sometimes depending on if you're trying to get rid of like strobing for example due to lights you might set it to 178.2 degrees or something like that if you're shooting at 23.98. 
So I'm going to lock it there. I normally shoot it at 172.8 when I'm shooting. Um, when I'm shooting, I, I normally set it either at 180 or around 172.8. So it's either the typical or standard 180 degrees, or sometimes it's just a little bit faster. So it gives it a little less motion blur. You cannot change the iris value on the iPhone, sadly. Obviously, if you're on a camera, you'd be able to, but when I say camera, like a traditional camera or black magic camera, depending on if you're doing a manual lens or uh, electronically controlled lens, you can change it. So for example, the camera that's recording this is a black magic 4K and it's got the Sigma 18 to 35 millimeter. So you can change the iris electronically with that one, but normally I shoot with manual lenses. Okay, so here you have the time, which will be displayed when you're recording. Then you have the ISO. And the ISO is a basic representation of how much light you're allowing to be recorded onto the sensor, as it were. So it's the sensitivity of the sensor. If you look at the histogram down here, you can see that there's no clipping or anything like that. So it's well exposed. So you can go from all the way down to 55 ISO, all the way up to 5280. Um, but obviously it depends on the situation and why you'd want to do that. But at any rate, when you, if you do that, you might be overexposing. But because I've got a variable ND on the front of this, it's not actually blowing it out. You can see it's still within the limits. You're not getting the traffic lights, which would indicate that you are clipping on your sensor. Okay, so let's bring this back down. And white balance. So the white balance, you have different presets for the white balance. And you would obviously set it to a preset based on the environment in which you're filming, or you can adjust it yourself using this scroll wheel with the different, um, with the different graduations. So you can go from very cool to very warm by setting it to 10,000K. And the other thing that you can do if you are moving around and you know what you want your white balance to be, is you can set it at whatever white balance you want it to be at, and then you hit the lock and it will lock it there. One thing you shouldn't do if you're trying to do film and then you want to grade it after, you shouldn't set it to auto because if you do that, as you move around, it's going to change the white balance and that's going to be a pain in the bum to grade that properly. So take that off and you want to set it to locked white balance. So when you do that, when it's locked like that, you obviously you can't adjust it. And the tint, the tint again, you can do auto tint, you can lock it, and then you can also adjust the amount of magenta or green. The tint is basically a balance control for magenta versus green. So if you put the tint up like this, then you can see the image becomes very magenta. You bring it down, it becomes very green. Tint is very important when you're doing skin tones. You have to make sure that the skin tone falls on to the uh, skin tone line when you're in Resolve. And there are various techniques for doing that. I did that in a video. Um, you can check a, a link in the description for how to do that. So we are setting the tint at, I can't remember what it was before, I think it was about seven or something, so we leave it at seven. Set that, and then the white balance, we need to change that because that's, that has changed. So we need to bring it to something like, that looks a bit better. If I'm recording on my Blackmagic cameras, I have a 18% gray card and I would use the 18% gray card to set the white balance of the camera. So I will perhaps do another video on that at some point. If you want to see a video on that, leave a comment, enough comments, and I'll get a video sooner rather than later. Okay, so we've done the white balance and we've done the tint. This is just describing the battery level and the HD is describing the resolution of what's being recorded. Now we go down to down here, the histogram, which is very important. So with your histogram, you have a display of where in the spectrum the light is hitting and the subject of your video where it falls within the spectrum. Very important is the these three traffic lights here. So you have the red, blue and green traffic lights. And when you are filming, if those are, are lit, either because you are crushing your blacks or you're blowing out your highlights, you need to adjust it so that they no longer are lit. 
and then you know that you're exposed properly or at least you're not clipping your footage. You can still be underexposed or overexposed slightly, but as long as you're not clipping your footage, that's super important. Then you have the indicators here of your storage. At the moment, it's saying that I've got 16% left or 43 minutes of recording and uh, have 41 gigs. But we will actually go now and change. If you go to media, I will select. So at the minute, I'm saving the clips to the app, which is not what you want to do. You want to save to external hard disk. As you can see, I've got an external hard disk up here. Most people will have the SanDisk, but I have got the Crucial X9, which I've put in a case, and I'm using that to record externally, or at least I will be once I change the settings. If I do this, and then I go back here to here, and I click that, now I am actually going to be recording. You see it's changed there, and it says iPhone X9 SSD. So we're recording the SSD now. So if you go back to the camera screen, you see now we have 16 hours, 49 minutes, 20 seconds. 96% of the disk is left and the total storage is 958 gigabytes. So that's why we want to be recording to external hard disk and not filling up our camera because we will have so much more recording time. Okay, so let's go through these menus here on the right hand side. So the first one we have is Zebras. So um, the Zebra lines will tell you, depending on where you set the threshold, whether or not you're going to be clipping your footage. I mean, basically, if you set it to 100% and it's, let me see if I can do it here, actually. If I set it to 100% and I put the ISO up, see, still not doing it. If I do it now, go back to Zebra, Zebras. Then you, okay, so put it down there. It's saying that at 100%, 99%, 99%, it is clipping. So it's telling you that's definitely clipping. And if you put it even lower, it's gonna tell you, yeah, it's definitely clipping. What you want to do is adjust your exposure so that, say you're at 98%, adjust your, let's go on here, put it on. We want to bring this back down to say 500, and then we want to adjust the variable ND. Yeah. And then we want to. Right, okay. Yeah, so you can basically adjust, you can set this to tell you where you will be clipping. So here it's saying it's clipping around 82%. So say for example, you want to set that for your skin tones to make sure your skin tones are not overly bright. You can set that at whatever it is you want to set it for. That's what you use zebras for, but I never use zebras myself. Okay, so now this is uh, peaking, focus peaking. So if you turn it off, you can't see what is in focus. If you turn it on, you can see what is in focus. You can see what's in focus and you can adjust the threshold for that. So if you turn it down, only things that are absolutely in focus are going to be displayed. Whereas if you turn it up, it's gonna give you a bit more tolerance. So it's gonna show you what's in focus, but it's gonna show you things which are slightly less in focus as well. So it might be a bit misleading, so it makes more sense to have this around the 70 something or 80 something percent. I normally leave it around 70 something percent on my camera. Uh, on the iPhone, you can probably leave it around that as well. Although it's all uh, autofocus anyway, so it doesn't really matter too much. Um, and then here you have, if I turn these off, you can, and then I turn them back on again. In fact, I turn them off and turn them on one by one. So I have my thirds. So basically I use the rule of thirds when I'm shooting. I always have the rule of thirds grid on, which helps me with the composition. 
It's definitely one of the most important things to consider when you are shooting. It's, you know, good composition. So that kind of helps you as a reference guide when you are doing that. And the next one is the tilt. And if I show you this one, this is the, the tilt indicator. So if you lift, if you tilt it up or down or to the side, it shows you when you are not level. And this is extremely handy, both on the cameras and on the iPhone, if you wanna make sure that you have a level shot. So as you can see, it's, um, it's leveled left and right, but it's, the phone is bent forward a little bit, which is why the, the lines don't fall on top of each other and turn blue. You can't see it very well here, but on the actual cameras, you can see it very well. The line, when they intersect and it's level, it turns blue, it turns from white to blue. So if you look there, if I tilt it inside, it's white. Put it back in the center, it's blue. And again, if I lean this backwards, you see it's blue. So that, that's perfectly vertical. Okay, but I'll put it back and I'll put the rule of thirds line back on. And then the other line you can put on is the center dot. But to be honest, I don't put that on because I've got the level meters. Instead, I put the level meters on, so that, that's a lot more useful. And again, you can also put the, the dot or central dot if you want. But again, I don't see the use of that, but you know, some other people might do, so it's up to you. So I'll put the rule of thirds and the level meters back on. Okay, so the next one that we have to look at is your ratio guides. Depending on how you're gonna be shooting, what your aspect ratio is, you can change this from any one of these listed. So you got all the way from four, nine sixteenths if you're doing socials, four fifths, which is again, that's Instagram social main page. Uh, this is Instagram stories and TikTok stories and stuff like that. Where, and your four thirds, whatever you're gonna use that for, 49. These are all just different aspect ratios which you can use. So whatever you're um, gonna be outputting to, it gives you a non-destructive line. So it gives you a line around your footage which works as a guide, but it doesn't actually crop the footage. You'll still get the same maximum resolution that you're recording in, but it's just giving you a guide as a reference. So when you are filming, you know to frame appropriately, etc. So I normally do 185 to 1, 16 by 9, and so that is good. And now you can also do a safe area. So if you put this on here, you can do a safe area, and you can have it 100% of the frame, or you can take it all the way down to 5%. God knows why you'd ever use that, but you know, it's there. So, Okay, and now you have false color. So false color is incredibly useful. I use this every time, many times during my sessions, and it shows you the exposure within your frame. So for example, if you look at the sky there, it's yellow, and if you look at the key reference on the side, it shows you how bright that is. So you have every area within here, has a different exposure level associated with it. And to tell you what that is, you look on your left, you look at the key, and it tells you where that is. With time, you get used to just looking at it and not having to look at this as a reference. For example, on the Blackmagic cameras, if I'm exposing for dark skin, like you want some of the skin to be this lime green, some of it to be a little bit gray, and maybe a little bit to be pink. Other times, if you're exposing for lighter skin, then sometimes you'd want the majority of it to be gray and a lot of it to be pink. Just whatever it is the subject is, you get used to associating that with that specific color that the false color gives you. And in addition to that, false colors is also a really good way of looking at your ratios, your contrast ratios between your light and dark if you're shooting faces or whatever it is the subject is. So it's an incredibly useful tool there. So you turn that off. And then your LUT. This is what the footage is actually gonna be recorded like. And this is, when you turn that on, that's a display LUT. So you just got a basic LUT, which is a Rec. 709 LUT. You have a LUT, which is a log 
to Rec. 709 conversion, which allows you to view the footage as it would appear if you just graded it. But the actual footage being recorded is this. So you set that by going to settings and you go to LUT and you LUT selection, you go, first of all, you have to set it to display LUT. So if that's off, then it won't show the LUT by default. Um, so you wanna leave that on and then you can just toggle it from the camera menu. And then you need to select the LUT that you want. I have got um, the Apple Log to Rec. 709. You can also import LUTs if you want to, and I've created some LUTs there which don't work, so <laughs> I won't be using those. And then there's a record LUT to clip, which you can do if you didn't want to do a lot of grading and you just wanted to be able to turn something around quickly, then that's fine. But I would not do that under normal circumstances because you limit the possibilities that you have. So, um, and then if you go back to um, the color space tag, then you can choose between Rec. 709, Apple Log, or any one of these. So I'm setting it to Rec. 709 at the moment, but you can also set it to Apple Log. And then we go back. So that's the LUT function. So the next one is focus. So you can either set it to autofocus, which I'd advise if you're just using it normally, or if you want, you can kind of try and pull focus yourself doing this, however you want to set it up. I mean, it depends on your situation. You may want to take control and use manual focus in case you want to either rack focus or there's a specific focus, so you want to have something in focus in the foreground or in the background and the, and the camera is not doing it the way you want it. You can just manually do that. But um, what we'll do here is we'll set it back to auto as it normally is and that should be good. And now you have your, your exposure as it were. So this is where you set your ISO. Again, like the ISO, oh, don't forget that you can swipe up. And then if you do, it gets rid of most of the heads up display information on the screen. And then you swipe down, you get it back again. So if you wanted to not have anything at all, you'd have to go back to these settings here. You have to take these off. And then when you swipe up, you would have that. Actually, you're still having this external. You can take that off there. And then when you swipe up, then you just have a clean feed. Swipe down and it's there again. But um, yeah, so basically you can go to the ISO here or you can go to it via this, via this button here. It's the same thing. Obviously, start stop record from there. This is the stabilization. Obviously, the iPhone has a built-in gyro, so it gives you stabilization because of the inbuilt gyro. Um, I mean, that comes as standard, but the, the app allows you to select how much additional stabilization you use. So you can either have it off, you have it standard, cinematic, or extreme. Whichever one of these you use is gonna give you a bit more of lag, and a bit more delay in between like what you're shooting and actually what's output or what's being recorded. So I normally set it to standard because I don't want it to look un super unnatural. And if you, if you set it to something like cinematic or extreme, sometimes it can look really unnatural. Um, so that's stabilization. Then you have magnification. So this is magnification. If you want to look at, if you want to look at something in your frame, it doesn't affect what's actually recorded. So it's not going to change what's actually recorded. It just gives you a, a different view of what it is you are looking at in case you need to drill down to get details. Right, and then here is where you would add your metadata. It gives you the lens data, obviously you can't change that. That is telling you what the iPhone lens is, that it's using. And depending on the lens that you choose, you can either choose the 24 millimeter or the other two lenses, that will change. Um, the reel, the scene, the take, you all, it's all user definable. You change that depending on what you're doing. Um, you can either select interior, exterior, day and night, what have you, whatever you're, however you're recording. 
swipe across, you select, select your camera name. This um, letter here, whatever you put for camera, when you record your clips, that's what it's going to show up as a prefix. So if you set that to something like B or D or whatever it is, it will be D and then a whole load of numbers and letters for the media. And okay, so that's pretty much all the functions on the camera end. And then let's have a look at the media. You can select between an external drive or the Blackmagic cloud system, but we're, we're not using that. So, and then there's chat, Blackmagic cloud, never use that. And then obviously now you get into the menu. So again, in terms of the record, it's pretty straightforward. You have um, your codec, which you're going to record in. I record in Apple ProRes 422. I think that's the, the most reasonable codec to record in because you can record in LT proxy, you know, the HEVC, which is the H265 or the H264. But all of these are going to give you very amounts of compression. But if you're trying to record so that you can grade it efficiently in Resolve, you should always record it as ProRes. If you need to get it out quickly for whatever reason, then you can record in H264. H265 is a lighter codec than H.264 and in theory is meant to be better but lots of times that is difficult to edit. Most machines have problems decoding that when it comes to editing so I never mess with that anyway. I just uh, record in 422. So 422 HQ is obviously highest that's available in this app but the file sizes are so much bigger than 422 it's really not worth the extra hard disk space for what you're doing. 42 is fine. Resolution, it's HD. You can go 4K, HD 720. I only need HD, so it's set to HD color space. Like I said, you could be Rec. 709 or Apple Log HDR. If you do Apple Log HDR, you will get a bigger color space and will give you more options in post. Remember what I said before that you had this, you had this display up here? That is where you select if you have the display. If you set it to time of day and you go back, it's going to give you time of day there. If you change it back to run record, when you record, it's going to give you that recording there. If you want to do time lapse recording, you set that up and you capture every frame, every, or it could be one frame every four seconds. You set your interval there basically is what I'm saying and let's take that off. If media stops, you can stop recording and you use that in case you have some sort of error with your recording. It gives you a warning. Um, camera, okay, so you can enable vertical video if you want to record for socials, etc. but we're not doing that. We're just doing horizontal video, so it's like this. And record indicator, we have the beep, we have the beep and flash, or you have none. Um, I set it to beep, although my phone is silent, so it doesn't actually <laughs> beep, but um, there is that option there. And then the use volume button to trigger recording. That's a standard feature that you have on the internal camera app that the iPhone has, but obviously gives you the option to do that. Lock white balance on record. Uh, you don't want it to be moving around, so you should have that on. And then while recording, swipe right to dim screen. So that's a nice little feature you have there. And you have like I said, you can change it to either speed or shutter angle. You should just leave it at uh, angle because it makes life a lot easier. Okay, so if you're trying to eliminate flicker, if you are in Europe, then it'll be 50 hertz. If you're in the US or the Caribbean, it'll be 60 hertz. But we're in Europe, so you're leaving it at 50. Um, and that's for when you're recording and there's like mains connected lights. You can get flickering sometimes if you're slightly off speed. And so that's to try and help reduce that. Lens correction, this obviously corrects for the internal um, Apple lens and you can leave that on or off, it's up to you. Anamorphic D-Squeeze, we are using a spherical lens on this, so this doesn't work, but you can either do a 1.33 or 1.55 if you have a suitable anamorphic lens adapter on the front of your camera. There are manufacturers that make those. You can flip the image for SLR lens, we don't have an SLR lens, so that's not highlighted 
and um, I have lock recurrent orientation. If you wanted to enable vertical recording and you put that on, then it makes sense to turn this off so that you can do vertical recording if you wanted to. Again, if you want to mirror the front facing camera, you, you select that. Audio, okay, so we're using the iPhone microphone. If you had another device connected, which enabled you to have a different microphone or different audio input, then it will show up here, but you don't, so it's only an internal microphone. Audio format, AAC. Um, I just leave it on that because that is very good quality. You don't need anything more than that. You can also use um, linear PCM, but AAC is standard. And record the audio as stereo. I don't see any reason why you wouldn't. Four channels is excess. You don't really don't need that, especially if you're just doing uh, standard recording. Dual mono, you could do, but it's better to have it as stereo. It's just easier to manage. And the sample rate, it's set to auto, but I could put it to 44.1 or 48. Lots of times in broadcast, people record at 48. CD quality in inverted commas is 44.1, but a lot you can do it at 48. But I just set it to auto because again, it doesn't really matter in this case. The audio metering, you have different standards which you can monitor your audio. You can use VU, which is volume units. It can be minus 18 dB FS, which is minus 18 dB below full scale, or you can have minus 20 dB FS, and you can also select the PPM units as well. So I'm actually recording this to my MacBook, and so that's why I say MacBook Pro there, because I am using mirroring to record the screen to my MacBook. And monitoring, okay, so here we can have focus lines, which are colored lines where you can have peaking. So I'm using the, earlier I said peaking, but I was speaking I was speaking generically and I called it peaking, but it's actually focus peaking, but uh, the way that Blackmagic defines it, they either call it peaking or colored lines. So this is, we have colored lines, which I showed you before. So let's set it to peaking and have a look at it and see what it looks like. So peaking is this which looks really horrendously ugly as far as I'm concerned. So I never use peaking, I actually use colored lines. So let's go back to this and set that to colored lines. If you go back, you see that is a lot more, that is, let's take this zoom off, set it to one. Yeah, that's a lot more uh, easy on the eye. If you set it to peaking, then you go back, that's horrendous, but some people, in professional productions use peaking and prefer peaking. I don't, I hate it. Um, so let's go back to colored lines and there we are. Okay, and media. So like I said, uh, you can record a proxy. Actually, I, I'm gonna take it off because I don't need a proxy because that just creates extra media that I need to deal with. But if you need to uh, record something so that you can send it to the cloud so you can work really quickly, you can record proxies, I don't need that. If you do that, and this is proxies only, then it will upload the proxies to wherever it is you are uploading. But because you turn it off, um, it's not giving that option. You can live sync, don't need that. Um, auto upload, select a project, again, don't need that. Don't need any of this. Save clips to files. Um, and you see the it's being saved to the external hard disk, which we set up earlier and um, save location data to clip, which is always good so you know where you are filming if you need to go back to it for uh, whatever reason. And then the LUTs, like I said, you got display LUTs. I had a look at this earlier, you got display LUTs, you got the uh, basic representation of what it's gonna look like if it had the right amount of saturation and contrast, which is what you don't get when you have a log image. And then you have presets, you can save presets which will be the setups for your camera. So for example, I create a new preset, I call this OD Toot 1 and it's saved. So now if I recall that preset, I can have all the settings that I created earlier come back exactly the way I wanted it. Accessories, you can use a Bluetooth, you can set it up to have the Nucleus wireless Lens control, I do have a nano nucleus, but I haven't set it up at the minute. So we'll leave that for now. And remote control camera, 
With this remote control camera, this is where you can set up another iPad or another iPhone and so you can view and record multiple cameras at the same time. So there's lots of tutorials online about that. Um, maybe I'll do that one in a future video, but I'm not going to go into that now. That was introduced by Blackmagic in the version 2 update very recently. Blackmagic Cloud, I never actually use that, but that's where you would log in to your Blackmagic Cloud and do your uploading or your remote sessions. Reset, we're not going to hit that. <laughs> we're not even going to go anywhere near that because I don't want to reset everything. And then about, it just tells you um, about the camera, etc. So thanks for watching. If you got some value out of that, it would be great if you would like, share, subscribe, share in your Facebook groups, all that good stuff. And I'll see you in the next video. So in the meantime, stay lucky, stay blessed.